kids, uh, and we're finding that uh, it affects their home life uh, and even their emotional lives. Uh, so we wanted to learn more about the subject. Uh, so uh, today we invited in an expert. Uh, Christopher T. Lawson is a well-known speaker, author, and director of planning for Financial Evolution Group, uh, which is a Los Angeles-based financial planning firm uh, that helps college grads and mid-career level professionals who are dry drowning in student loan debt. Uh, Chris has been uh, in the financial services industry for 19 years. Uh, he's also the author of the book, School Loans Gone, and he holds the Chartered Retirement Planning Counselor designation from the College for Financial Planning. He also serves on the Board of Directors for the Los Angeles Chapter Financial Planning Association and volunteers for the South Florida Junior Achievement. Uh, uh, he's also responsible for FinancialEvolutionGroup.com website. Uh, Chris, welcome, uh, welcome to our video. Thank you. Thank you for having me, Gary. And that uh, in uh, a couple of emails that we had traded earlier, uh, you know, we were talking about our concern uh, uh, with student loan debt uh, and and, uh, and the possible bubble that we're facing uh, in student loan debt. Uh, and you mentioned that uh, there's two common concerns uh, that you see over and over with uh, your clientele. Uh, could you tell us a little bit about that, please? Sure, absolutely. Uh, the biggest uh, concern that I really hear all the time is that uh, uh, my clients are really afraid that they're not going to be able to retire because they have so much student loan debt. And that's something that uh, really comes in number one is one of the biggest concerns that I hear. And that concern also comes in with other competing objectives like buying a house, things like uh, uh, taking vacations, things, uh, other types of things that uh, really are competing objectives to the way that they spend their income. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, uh, what are some of the, uh, uh, the, the the first things that people should do if they're concerned that they, uh, uh, you know, won't be able to pay off their student loans or that it's going to have a significant impact on their finances? And, and that's really the big question. Uh, what's the first thing to do? Uh, what I talk about a lot when I'm doing uh, planning for my clients is I talk about getting a breath of fresh air. That's the biggest thing. Because I've seen this, uh, it's like almost like an albatross around their necks. And my clients are typically their, their middle age uh, individuals. A lot of people, when they find out what I do, they say, oh, it's so great that you're working with these kids. Uh, when in actuality, people that I work with usually have had their student loans for over 10 years. So when I'm working with someone, the biggest thing is, uh, even though they've had the loan so long, they've never really sat down and gotten organized in terms of, really looking at their finances and looking at it from a perspective of putting together their balance sheet, putting together their income statement, putting together a proper debt payoff order spreadsheet. Because the biggest thing that is, uh, the biggest problem that I see that people have is that they aren't really clear on how long it's going to take off to pay the debt, to take to pay the debt off, and they're also not clear on what specifically they should pay off first. There's always a lot of confusion around well, you know, should I put a little bit extra towards this loan this month and then a little bit extra towards that loan this month and um, we have some credit cards, should I put a little bit extra towards that? And so what the planning becomes is a mishmash of different things. What I find is that when people get really clear on what their financial situation looks like and they get really clear on what the specific order of debts that they have are to be paid off, it takes an enormous burden uh, and, and lifts an enormous weight off of their shoulders and helps them to get really uh, back into uh, living their lives again and uh, gives them a level of confidence that provides more momentum. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can see where uh, uh, going from a position where you really aren't planning and you're just kind of stabbing in the dark to uh, to knowing what the roadmap looks like would be quite comforting. I know uh, uh, there's some people that really are under a lot of pressure. Uh, is there a uh, any way for them or are there some tools that they can use to kind of try to get their lives back? Yeah, absolutely. The biggest thing that we look at is uh, we look at the options that are available to them through the types of loans that they have. Of course, uh, the, the two big types of loans that people have are they have the public loans and then they have the private loans. The private loans, as um, many people already know, there aren't as many options available with a private student loan as there are with a public student loan. And uh, a lot of this will uh, really hinges upon the initial, um, uh, the terms of the actual loan. You can find those in the original loan documents. 
But one of the things that does work out very well for people who have the uh, public loans is looking at a situation where they can take advantage of income-based repayment or income-contingent income repayment or um, the uh, pay-as-you-go program. All of these programs allow borrowers to reduce the amount of payments right away based upon their income. And these are all programs that are based on financial hardship. And uh, for the majority of these programs, really, it's the uh, you need to um, uh, make sure that you qualify for these programs. It's a little bit different for the uh, pay-as-you-go program. Once you're in the program, you uh, continue to be in the program, but each year your um, payments can go up and down depending on, uh, uh, on your level of income. But that's a good way to immediately get a breath of fresh air and reduce the payments. It's not a cure-all, though, because what tends to happen is once those payments go down substantially, interest continues to accrue, so that's going to be, you know, that will be a situation where you may end up paying more interest overall. But if you have the other documents, if you have your income statement and you have your balance sheet together, you can see what the impact is on your overall financial health. But that's the biggest part to getting a breath of fresh air is taking advantage of some of those programs that are already out there. Um, I also wanted to say just a couple words about um, some other options. Everybody, pretty much everybody is familiar with um, uh, deferment options. I mean, deferment options are when you're in school and you're not paying on the student loans. Uh, there are also deferment options for unemployment and other um, circumstances. So deferment is one of the other options. We also take a look at uh, forbearance options. Forbearance, you're still accruing interest, but it gives you the opportunity to sort of get back on your feet, so to speak, if you're really in that dire situation and um, you can skip over some payments while you're uh, getting back on your feet. And uh, then there are also some forgiveness options. And forgiveness is probably one of the, the, the best things that you can uh, take advantage of if you qualify. So forgiveness is when actually all or a portion of your student loans can uh, basically be eliminated because of some uh, specific program that you take advantage of. So um, just as an example, if you're a teacher in education, if you go to some uh, disadvantaged areas or some underserved areas and agree to work there for a certain period of time, you can get all or a portion of your student loans forgiven. Uh, if you're a doctor, the same thing applies. There are, uh, for different categories, lots of different ways that you can uh, take advantage of the forgiveness programs and forgiveness options as well. And uh, there are also, if you Google forgiveness programs and then you input whatever profession you're in, you can pull up very quickly a, f um, a list of different ways that you can uh, take advantage of forgiveness programs. Now, are there uh, some ways to, to speed up the time it takes to pay off student loans? Uh, because you talk about people being in middle age, uh, and uh, uh, yeah, I mean, when, uh, when we're a 20-year-old undergraduate, we never consider that we could still be paying off student loans when we're 35 or 40 years old. Uh, is there any way, when you're heading down that path, to speed up the process? Absolutely. There is. Uh, the biggest way to, to speed up the process is to get very clear on the order of payoff of the student loans. What I guide my clients through is I guide them through a, um, a process that's called the debt payoff order spreadsheet. And uh, I use a pretty sophisticated spreadsheet, but uh, actually in my book, uh, School Loans Gone, I actually show people how to do it themselves with just, with just a simple Excel spreadsheet. But what people don't realize a lot of times is that if you have if you pay off debts in a specific order, you can actually reduce the amount of time it takes to pay off the debts. You have to have a disciplined strategy, and if you pay off the debts in a certain order, it, it works out better. And the way that I mean is many people will focus primarily on interest rates, and they'll think, okay, well, you know, I've got to pay off this, this high interest rate loan before I pay anything else off, and that's the, the way they go at it. But there's actually... a there's a mathematical and a behavioral aspect to this as well. And the behavioral aspect is when you start paying off uh, a loan that's very large in the beginning and you're not making much progress on it, the mind almost says, what's the point? So there's a momentum, a feeling of momentum that's also important. So when you're paying off the student loans, 
any extra money that you can come up with um, should go off go towards their number one payoff uh, debt and then you just use that to accelerate the payoff of the other debts as you go and this is you know this isn't a, a brand new strategy this is the strategy goes by many names I mean it, from debt snowball to debt acceleration to um, many many types of names that it goes towards but when you get really focused and you're paying off debts in a certain order and you're paying them off consistently it can dramatically reduce your payoff order I, mean, I see um, clients that come to me when I look at the way that they're paying off their debts and then we run it through the spreadsheet, I'm able to save my average client $27,000 in interest payments and shave 11 years off of their repayment schedule. And that's without finding any additional money in their existing um, budget. It's just by changing the way that they pay off their student loans. So it's very important to have a, a good plan in place. Now, if somebody wanted to, uh, to find out a little more, uh, where would they find your website, Chris? They can find me at www.financialevolutiongroup.com, and it's spelled just like it sounds. And there they can find uh, blog posts on paying off debt, getting, um, getting a breath of fresh air, everything we've talked about on, uh, on this particular video. And they can also get a copy for free of my book, School Loans Gone. I'm giving it away for free on my website. And it walks you through the entire process of setting up your own debt uh, repayment schedule and accelerating that debt payoff. Fantastic. Well, Chris, we want to thank you for joining us here today. Uh, uh, I'm Gary Foreman, again, of thedollarstretcher.com, uh, uh, where we feature all kinds of uh, ways to stretch your dollar and get the most for your money. Uh, and if you have an, a suggestion for a future, uh, future broadcast, uh, uh, please send it by email to gary at stretcher.com. Chris, thanks again, and we'll look forward to talking to you again soon. Thank you, Gary. It's been a pleasure.